The junior ministers from the Office of the First and Deputy First Minister are the special guests as Axoni launch their five-year strategic plan at Stormont. 2013 also marks Axoni's 10-year anniversary. In that time, Northern Ireland has seen huge change in the makeup of society. Thanks very much, junior ministers. Um, the single biggest change I've seen is the increase in the population of the diverse uh, individuals um, coming to secular in Northern Ireland. We, in our, in, the statistics show that there's a roughly over 8,000 to 10,000 um, individuals from African and Caribbean backgrounds living here. And with that, we have, um, they, they, they brought with them um, cultural diversity that, that can be reflected in, in, in the landscape. The development and publication of this new five-year strategy signals a progressive commitment and resolve to build capacity and empower members of our community. As a result of the extensive consultation exercise undertaken with the community and with our stakeholders, we are confident that this blueprint will contribute to addressing the needs and aspirations of people of African and Caribbean heritage in Northern Ireland. It's not really just our community, it's making sure that you know, the majority community here and the ethnic minority communities that we build a shared, brighter and prosperous future for all. And, and that includes having a voice, it's making sure that whatever sensitivities or uh, you know, differences, that they're not actually seen as differences, but you actually have an embracement of a cultural identity and people can participate um, you know, fully and active in uh, civic life. But look, since your formation in 2003, Axonia has grown in size, it's grown in stature, it's grown in regard, and we know it to be a key member of the ethnic minority community here. As Axonia has grown, so has the breadth and the scale of your services and of your ambitions. So it's a privilege for Jennifer and I to be here to launch your plan for the next five years. One of the eight priorities that you mentioned in your strategy um, is to monitor hate crime incidents. And this highlights that these shameful acts still continue in our society today. And hate crime is a very personal attack on someone, whether it is because of the colour of their skin, whether they have a disability, or their sexual orientation, or their perceived religion, or their political or cultural opinion. And very often, the effects of hate crime can impact on a person for years undermining their sense of well-being because it goes right to the heart of who they are. Outgoing programme manager Alfred Abolaren is being recognised for his contribution over the past 10 years. I'd like to wish Axoni and members of the African and Caribbean communities a happy 10th year anniversary. Indeed, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Even the longest and most difficult projects have a starting point. It's a delight to have been invited by Axoni to comment and give a brief overview of the new five-year strategy for the African and Caribbean communities. The challenge that we will be facing over the next five years is one, um, because of the diverse cultures which are coming in, we have challenges like um, cultural barriers, um, language barriers, that um, it's, it's a lot of work trying to, um, to, to bring these cultures together as, as, as they're aware. The one biggest problem facing Axone would be um, the access to resources um, to be able to um, address the, the needs and um, concerns of the, the African and Caribbean people. Today was the best day. I can't even imagine how good it so much feels to have this trophy of community got talent because most of the time I used to sit in my room, doubt myself and say, what am I doing with my life? But at the end of the day, that's made me prove that I am worthy of making it to the top and don't stop. They told me I won't make it, but I'm the brightest star. Shine on all these fingers, so tell them who you are. Twinkle, twinkle, little star. I love
love singing. I mean, from a very young age, singing has been my number one thing. Life is good here. I actually really enjoy it here, so I can't really complain because it's great. It's a great opportunity for us as well, you know, coming from home, so we get more, ex like, ex um, more experience of life, you know what I mean? I'm too sick, somebody get up and you're for me. Get it? Shut sure, eh. up. I really don't care. I'm only 17, trying to be a millionaire. Fake poppers on me, please don't compare. It's raining, but no drops. I'm about to jam in a club with good club. I just want to say thank you to Ascone, because every time they don't really know me, but they still love me from the day one. Sometimes people tell me like, oh, you're not good enough for, or oh, you know, you don't have the looks, or you don't do, you don't have some certain things. But I just don't listen. I just put everything down in the paper and just write down my feelings. You know. It feels amazing. It feels like you mean something, and getting your words out of your inspiration, and using your knowledge and your wisdom to tell the world. It actually unites countries and nations together. To be honest, I'm really, really grateful to even be in here because I've never been here. It's massive. If I have one word for them, it would be thank you, and I appreciate what they're doing for us. I appreciate what they're doing for the youth. Africa has a little part close to my heart. As I said to some of you at Christmas time, my father intended to spend his entire career in Liberia. Um, anybody from Liberia here? By extraordinary coincidence, the Liberian family in the audience knew Jonathan Bell's uncle very well. He was working as a missionary just outside the capital, Monrovia. His own father had also wanted to be a missionary, but was prevented through ill health. I sometimes reckon I could have been born in Liberia had life have taken another turn. The central message at Stormont would be uh, look at your elective constituents and your representation. Uh, the dynamics have changed dramatically. Um, when you look at the diversity that exists within your constituents, these are your elected representatives. We need to be seen and be representing everyone and making sure that everyone has equal opportunities in Northern Ireland.